Welcome to Andometry. Today's discussion is on backsliding and how to recover. Come sit down with me now. What is backsliding? There's a quote by J.C. Ryle who said, Backsliding generally begins first with the neglect of private prayer. Another quote by Billy Sunday says, The backslider likes the preaching that wouldn't hit the side of a house while the real disciple is delighted when the truth brings him to his knees. And Zach Poonen said, when you are not sure of your salvation, it's very easy to get discouraged and to backslide. The dictionary says, it's a relapse into a bad state, to lapse morally or into a worse state. According to the Bible though, the backslider has several characteristics. One, the backslider holds fast to deceit. In Jeremiah 8 verse 5, it says, Why then has this people of Jerusalem turned away with a perpetual turning away from me? They hold tightly to deceit, that is idolatry, and they refuse to repent and return to God. This is the amplified version. So the backslider not only holds fast to deceit, but refuses to repent. The backslider also becomes entangled in past sins and are overcome by them. The last state is worse than the one before it. So 2 Peter 2 verse 20 says, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than it was at the beginning. Jesus also mentions it in what I refer to as the mechanics of backsliding, mentioned in Matthew 12 45 and Luke 11, 26. But we'll touch on that later on. The backslider also forsakes the Lord and does not fear him. And this is found in Jeremiah 2, verse 19. He says, Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore, and see that it is an evil thing and bitter, for thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that my fear is not in thee, said the Lord of hosts. Well, let me just stop here because sometimes people have a little problem with the word fear of the Lord. But I don't remember the Hebrew word used, but it actually means to be in awe of, not to be afraid of. That's a different word. So to be in awe of the Lord means that you respect the things of God and you, you're aware of his awesome power. But you're not afraid because through Jesus Christ you can approach him. Well, let's continue. The backslider will also not exalt God. Hosea 11 verse 7 says, And my people are bent on backsliding from me. Though they call them to the Most High, none at all would exalt him. The backslider also becomes conformed to the world. The world, not the word. So he becomes conformed to the world and not the word. Everything in the world seems better than the word. The submission to the word is difficult. Yet the Lord says, if you love me, you will obey me. Some versions says, some translations say, it's not difficult to obey me if you love me. And this is found in John 14, verse 15. Therefore, it's not a stretch to say that the backslider has lost their first love. Yet in the book of Revelation, Jesus does call you back to your first love. The backslider, another characteristic, is that they have an identity crisis. They have difficulty seeing themselves as sons of God, but see the Father instead as a judge waiting to punish many if they spoke. So he's just sitting there on the throne watching you to see that you're going to slip up. And the devil is there whispering in your ear saying, you know, say, you're not going to have no forgiveness, so don't worry yourself. Just, you may as well just sin, because once you mess up, you just mess up. God just awaits to punish you. And so they live in a state of condemnation because their minds are not renewed. The backslider is also in a state of rebellion and willfully disobeys the word of God. So you know you're not to teeth, but you teeth. You know you're not to lie, but you lie. And you make a decision to do these things because you can't accidentally teeth and you can't accidentally lie. Right? So why do we backslide? Let's look at the mechanics of backsliding. Luke 11, 26 and Matthew 12, 45 talks about the demon cast out of someone. It goes to dry places, but it doesn't like where it has been cast. And it says, I paraphrase, I will return to my house. Now why you get this, you know? Are you in my calling house, you know? 
You understand me? You have been delivered of this demon. And you don't like where he has been sent. Dry places. But as far as he's concerned, he's going back to his house. He's going back to his house because you're him house. <laughs> so he finds a place swept clean but empty. And he goes for seven worse than himself. And the state of the person is worse before. Now, I want you to understand this, you know. Because demons are very territorial, according to the scriptures. They're very territorial. They like to hold on to them territory. And this demon say, all right, you know, them kick me out easy. So better me be the doorman and give up being the strong man. I want you to get that, you know. So he give up being the strong man and bring seven worse than him to run things while he hold the door. <laughs> no, that can't work. That can't work at all. So, why is the place empty? Can you remember that? Come on and find the place empty. Why is it empty? It's empty because we have not asked the Holy Spirit to fill the vacated places. When you have been delivered from unforgiveness, ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with His love and compassion. When you have been delivered from deceit, ask Him to fill you with the Spirit of truth. So, whatever you've been delivered from, Ask the Holy Spirit to just fill you with His, with His Spirit. So, if you've been delivered from stupidity or procrastination, ask the, Lord, the, the Holy Spirit to fill you with, with a disciplined mind. And, and there's some personal responsibility on your part too, because it's not just, oh, Holy Spirit, fill me with this, and then you don't resist the sin. You have to resist the devil. You have to submit to God, resist the devil, and, and the devil will flee. But if you don't submit to God, and if you don't resist, then you don't have no reason for run, because you're not putting up any resistance. All right, continuing. When you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, and you're not submitted to his instructions, it's easy to fall back where you started. Obedience to his promptings is what keeps us out of trouble. We also backslide because we refuse to let go of worldly things, thoughts, and deeds. So this happens when we're not immersed in the word. Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, is good pleasing and perfect way. So how do you know when you're backslid? No desire to pray is the surest sign of all. Now praying does not necessarily mean getting on your knees and staying there for an hour. It has its place. But I like what Smith Wigglesworth said. He said, I do not pray for more than five minutes at a time, but I don't go five minutes without praying. He was a great man of faith and he moved in great anointing and healing and supernatural signs and wonders. You can look it up. Easy to find information about him. But praying is not only talking, but listening. It's a conversation. Dialogue means two-way. You're listening and you're speaking. I've been on the bus, you see, let me tell you this. I've been on the bus and I'm talking to God. And sometimes I whisper. Sometimes I talk in my thoughts. But sometimes I talk out loud. And I've had people say to me, who are you talking to? I go, I'm, I'm talking to God. And then they give me this look, right? <laughs> they give me this look that just says, okay, crazy person sitting beside me. But you know, I would rather be crazy for Jesus than be crazy for anything else. So an example of God talking to me, one day I'm on the bus and the Lord says, go over to that young lady and tell her that I love her and I've worked out the problem that she is experiencing. So she need not worry about going home. So I dutifully get up. I go to the young lady. I say, um, the Lord says to tell you he has worked out the problem that you're experiencing. You need not be afraid to go home. And I went back to my seat. But when I looked, the lady bawling like crazy. Oh, God really loved me. And she bawling, bawling, bawling. And you know, I was glad because, you know, God gets the glory. So let's continue. So, and I get a real kick out of telling people I talk to God, you know, because the looks on their face are really priceless. So the next sign that we know we are backsliding is we choose the things of the world over the things of God. 
an easy example, you would go to the party but to be too tired to go to church. Or you watch every movie but you're too tired to pray or read the word. Or you read any other book but you can't read your Bible because it's just too tiring. Another sign is that we choose our way over God's way. That's self-deceit. We become our own idols because we believe our intellect knows better than God. You know, the God that make, that actually gave us the intellect we have, we believe that it's better than God. So we worship ourselves and our intellect. Now, I read some in a book once. It says, you know, when we worship idols, we are actually putting ourselves down in because God made us as the pinnacle of his creation. So when we worship anybody else but God, who's the only person above us, we are saying, or let's say I'm worshiping my camera, that my camera is more valuable than I am, which is just not true. So you see, easy to fall into idolatry when we put anything above God because we are saying that that thing is better than us in the whole hierarchy that God created. All right. So another sign is that we don't respect the things of God. So, for example, you turn up late for church, um, you go on social media during ministry of the word or during worship. Now, I will admit there will be times when you're in church and you get an inspired word that you feel you have to share on Facebook or whatever. But the problem is that sometimes once we go on, we do not come off back. We sit in Facebook or or we sit in WhatsApp or we start conversation. You need to understand, during the ministry of the word or during worship is when the spirit of destruction works at its optimum. Because the whole point of a spirit that distracts you or anything that distracts you is the, that the enemy would use to distract you is to keep you from hearing that rim of word that is there for you. Because there are some things you have to catch in your spirit. But if your spirit is distracted, you're not going to be, you're not going to hear it when it comes. You'll wonder what was said. And you'll know that something is missing, right? So the message is kind of lost. If you're not disciplined in that regard, just focus on what's being taught. Better you take notes in a book or something. Now, how do you recover from backsliding? Can you recover from backsliding? Of course. It begins. As with all things when you move away from God, repentance and turning. Now the Greek word for repentance is a word called metanoia. And it means to make a 180 degree. So people have talk about, oh, you make a 360 degree. 360 means that you go back where you started. Okay? 180 degree means you turn away from it and you're moving away from it. So Proverbs 28 verse 13 says, he who hides his sin find no mercy, but he who confesses and forsakes his sin find mercy. So confession, that word homologio, is also Greek. It means coming into agreement with. And it means coming into agreement with God that you're in a backsliding state. So we're talking about backsliding here. Forsaking the sin is turning away from it. And when you turn your back on something, you're no longer looking at it. We tend to move towards whatever we are looking at. Sin by its very nature is mesmerizing, hypnotic, and tantalizing. If it wasn't, we wouldn't be duped by it. If our focus is on sinning, well, we will sin. If our focus is on the word, we'll be drawn to do what the word says. And as you turn, you move away from sin. There's a lesson, you know, in what happens to, happened to, to Lot's wife as she turned into a pillar of salt when she looked back at what she turned and was running away from. You don't want to become a colic. You know what a colic is? A block of salt. You know what about corn, you? That's another thing. Corn, salt. Get it? Jamaicans will get it because, you know, corn, pork, corn, beef. Mean that it's salt. Okay? So you don't want to become a pillar of salt. You cow come, use it as a colic. Right? You want to just move away from it and not, not look back at it again because why would you want to go back you know, it sounds nasty, but the scripture does says a dog will return to his vomit. We are not dogs, so we don't want to do that grossness, okay? I spoke to a lawyer once, you know, about the benefits of confession, and she said, in a court of law, once you have confessed to a crime, you cannot be accused of that particular crime again. 
not only that you must benefit from your confession now that's a word for somebody right there confess your sin and benefit from the forgiveness and healing love of God okay just come into agreement with God God you know I did this I did this because remember you know Jesus is there interceding from you for you if you remember the story of the prodigal son you know the father was sitting down looking out for him son remember my more than one son in him could have said all right same guy about him business me not care about him no he was there looking out for his son and when he saw him coming he ran to meet him no I see him where God I go run for meet you you know Jesus going to run for meet you when you come back to him to help you all right so just turn back to him turn your back on sin and turn back to him Psalm 51 verse 4 says against you you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Recognize that your sin is against God and that he is just and merciful. In the book of Hebrews we are told we can come as people who have come, accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We can come boldly to the throne of mercy and get help. Right? So you recognize that your sin is against God and that he's just and merciful. His judgment against you is actually just and right. Yet, you can appeal to his mercy and loving kindness, which in the Psalms tells you endures forever and ever. Another step to recovery. Do not accept condemnation from the devil. So Romans 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, after the spirit understand that this is not a license to sin there's a difference between condemnation and conviction the devil says you'll never get it right god will never forgive you you cannot withstand the punishment that's going to be inflicted upon you might as well just continue to sin the holy spirit will say this is where you went wrong i can help you get back on the right path you have repented and i've cleansed you and forgiven you the devil condemns the Holy Spirit convicts. I had a dream once when I recommitted my life to Jesus in 2007. Because me did backslide holy. Me did walk two sides of the fence. And one day the Lord just said, All right, Silver, when you walk across a fence, when you walk across a crack, what happened? And I said, Well, you are divided. And he said, Well, what happens if the crack white? I said, Well, you have to pick a side. And then he says, Well, pick a side. No, but <laughs> that's a no brainer. Of course, I'm going to pick God. Because me and the devil now know. Me and him are combo or to put it in terms that foreigners can understand. We're not friends. The devil and I are not companions, okay? So, anyway, you know those cartoons when the messenger comes before the king and he has this long scroll going behind him? So, the devil came to me like that in my dream and he had a long everlasting scroll and he was reading out on my past thing. So, you know, I let him finish because I never want him to come back. You understand? So I let him finish. And then I said, you know, it is written. <laughs> I love it. You know, if you know a chapter and verse, you have to know that it is written. It is written. All things are passed away. And I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Come out of my dream. Right? And of course, him had to go away. So the next step to recovery from being backslidden is to believe the word of God. Of course, you can't believe what you don't know. To know the heart of God, you have to connect with him through his word. As you come to know him, you appropriate his promises and know what he actually says about you and what you mean to him. You are then able to see him as a loving father that he is. No, no one can know the word on your behalf, you know. You have to know it for yourself and you have to be like the Bereans in the book of Acts. Paul was the famous anointed apostle. He knew the scripture back and forth. He knew it from before him turned Paul. He knew it from him was Saul. He had a hard knowledge of it when he was transformed into Paul. Yet, when he preached the burials, what did they do? They went and searched the scriptures to make sure what he was saying was true. Now, if people can do that to Paul, you can do it to anybody. Okay? You don't just take people's word for that. This is what the word says. 
Now, the scripture says that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, the thing is established. And I had a Bible study teacher, um, Brother Lockton Smith. I mean, I love the way that man teach. He would always say that. He would, when he has a revelation, he would show you. Two scriptures from the Old Testament, two scriptures from the New Testament to back up what he said. And you must always seek confirmation of God's word in his word. Okay? So on the road to recovery, believe that God wants to restore. 1 John 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, there it is again, confession, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So you're not just get. let me tell you, let me put it this way. You're not just getting a, oh, I forgive you, you know. You're going to wash you down and cleanse you, cleanse you. So you're spanking you and remember, you know, he says, I blot out your transgressions and I remember them no more. So if you are being reminded of it, it's not God. God not saying, you remember, five years ago you didn't do that, you know, and... You know, we still have your fight. No, he has blotted it out. So if you are getting a remembrance of that, is two things happening. Either you're not forgiving yourself or the devil is trying to condemn you. Don't accept the condemnation. We soon talk about forgiving yourself. Jeremiah 15, verse 19 to 21 says, Therefore, this is what the Lord says. If you repent, here we go again, you will restore, I will restore you that you may serve me. If you utter worthy, not worthless words, you will be my spokesman. Let these people turn to you, but you must not turn to them. I will make you a wall to these people, a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you to rescue and save you, declares the Lord. I will save you from the hands of the wicked and deliver you from the grasp of the cruel. The word transforms how we see God. If we follow the world and not the word, we believe that God is just waiting for you to mess up so he can punish you. As we study the word, we come to know him as our loving father who provides and protects, provides for us and protects us. Now, from the scripture in Jeremiah that I just read, repent so you can serve him. Utter worthy words so you can be his spokesman or spokesperson. Let the people turn to you. They must be attracted to the light of Jesus in you. And you will not be overcome by anyone because he is with you to rescue you. On the road to recovery, keep your focus on him. So the next step to recovery is to turn your eyes to God. Psalm 34 verses 4 and 5 says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. You remember Moses, how he was in the presence of God and when he come down, he had to hide his face with a veil because he shine like new penny. All right, so you keep looking to God and you will be radiant because you'll be reflecting the, his light in you. Last but not least, forgive yourself. Yeah, a lot of people say, oh, I know God forgive me, but I can't forgive myself. Really? All right. To forgive yourself is to accept the forgiveness of God. Some people go through life not forgiving themselves of their past. And again, if God has, God has forgiven you and blotted out your transgressions and he remembers them no more, why can't you? To not forgive yourself is to engage in a kind of idolatry because then you have placed yourself above God. Because God is the supreme being. If him can forgive you, who are you not to forgive yourself? I'm just going to offer utter the points about the road to recovery from backsliding. Right? So, the first thing to recover is to repent and turn. The second thing is to recognize that your sin is against God and that he's just and merciful. So, if you confess and repent, you're forgiven, you're washed clean. Do not accept condemnation from the devil. Believe the word of God. So you have to study to show yourself approved. You have to read the word and become intimate with the word. And I want to tell you, as you become intimate with the word, you're becoming more intimate with Jesus Christ. Because he is the living word. Believe that God wants to restore you. So don't accept nothing from the body where you say, God will never forgive you for that. No. 
Believe that he wants to restore you and start moving towards him. And turn your eyes to God and forgive yourself. I hope this was a blessing to you. Please like, comment and share. Subscribe to this channel. And I'll see you next week on the Matri.